Good morning. Conformal mapping continued. The definition is, suppose under the transformation u equal to uxy and v equal to vxy, that is, u and v are depending upon x and y variables. Let's say the point x0, y0 of the z-plane is mapped into the point p dash, that is, u0, v0 of the w-plane. And the curves let's say C1 and C2 intersecting at this point P, X0, Y0 is mapped respectively into the curves Tau1 and Tau2 in the W plane at P dash point, right? Then, if the transformation is such that the angle between C1 and C2 is equal to both in magnitude and sense, whether positive or negative, right, to the angle between the curves tau1 and tau2. Then we say that such mapping is conformal mapping, right. Here if you notice, this is your z-plane and this is the w-plane. The point P, x0, y0 is present here in the z-plane and these are the two curves c1 and c2. Let alpha be the angle between these two curves. Suppose this point P is mapped into the point P dash having the coordinates U0, V0 and the curves at this point P dash is say tau1 and tau2, right? And the angle between these two curves is alpha. So here the angle between C1 and C2 is also alpha and the angle between tau1 and tau2 is also alpha and also having the same sense that is the same direction, right? So such kind of mapping is conformal mapping in which the angle between the curves are equal in magnitude and also in directions or sense, right? For the isogonal mapping, the transformation is isogonal if it preserves the magnitude of the angles, means if the angles between C1 and C2 is same, alpha, and tau1 and tau2, the angles between these two curves is also alpha. But it's not necessary that the sense is also the same. Suppose this is negative alpha. The magnitude is same but the sense is not same, then we say that such kind of mapping is isogonal mapping, right? Okay, let's move on to the sufficient condition for W equal to Fz to represent a conformal mapping. So we are going to prove the sufficient conditions, right? The theorem is, let Fz be an analytic function of Z in a region D of the Z-plane and let f dash z is not equal to 0 inside d. Then the mapping w equal to fz is conformal at the points of d. Right? Suppose I'm having this z plane and w plane. Right? And this is the point p and this is mapped into the point p dash. Right? And again, I'm having the curves C1 and C2 over here. This is C1 and this is C2. And this is also tau2 and this is tau1. And this is curve tau1 and this is tau2. Right? Let interior point of the region D is equal to Z0. Suppose this is your domain D having the interior point as Z0. Let curves passing through Z0 is C1 and C2 and the curves making angles with the real axis is equal to alpha1 and alpha2 respectively. So it is making, let's suppose this is the tangent for the curve C2 and this is the tangent for the curve C1. And this is the real axis. C1 is making angle alpha 1 with the real axis. 
and C2 is making angle alpha 2 with the real axis. So the curves making angle alpha 1 and alpha 2 with the real axis. Let the points on the curve C1 be Z1 and on C2 be Z2 at the same distance R from Z0. If this is the point Z0 and on C1 let me have the point Z1 and at C2 I am having the point Z2 and the distance between Z0 and Z1 is given to be as R. Right? So Z1 and Z2 are both at the distance R from this Z0. R is small. Right? Now here Z1 minus Z0 is what? Z1 is a complex number and Z0 is also a complex number and difference between the complex number is also a complex number and let me write that complex number in polar form let's say the difference is equal to r e the power iota theta 1 in polar form right and similarly z2 minus z0 is equal to r e the power iota theta 2 now as r tends to 0 which means what there is no distance between z1 and Z0. There is no distance between Z2 and Z0. When R is tending to 0, this means Z1 is approaching Z0. And if I have taken the difference for Z1 and Z0 to be as R e the power iota theta 1, which means that angle theta 1 is also approaching this angle alpha 1. Yes? So, when R is tending to 0, Theta 1 is tending to alpha 1. Very good. Similarly, when R is tending to 0 and if I move this point Z2 to Z0, which means this R is 0. There is no distance between Z0 and Z2, which means Z2 is actually Z0. Then, this means theta 2 is approaching alpha 2. So, as the point moves from Z0 to Z1 along C1, which means image point moves from, yes, W0 to W1 along tau1 in W plane, right? If the point Z0 is moving to the point Z1, the image point moves from W0 to W1 and, and as the point moves from Z0 to Z2 along the curve C2, the image point moves from W0 to W2 along tau2 curve. So similarly, as the point moves from Z0 to Z2 along C2, image point moves from W0 to W2 along tau2. Okay, let's consider the difference between W1 and W0 to be equal to again in a polar form. Let this be equal to rho 1 e the power iota phi 1 and the difference between W2 and W0 is equal to rho 2 e the power iota phi 2. Now since Fz is analytic, this is given to us. We know that the definition for the analytic function is limit z1 tends to z0 f of z1 minus f of z0 over z1 minus z0 is equal to f dash z0 right what is f of z1 this is w1 right f of z1 is equal to w1 and f of z2 is equal to W2 or f of z0 is equal to W0. So, this implies just writing the values, putting the values as f of z1 as w1 and f of z0 as w0. Limit z1 tends to z0. w1 minus w0 over z1 minus z0 equal to f dash z0. 
Now it is also given to us that f dash z not equal to zero in the domain, right? So if this is not equal to zero, so let's say that f dash z to be equal to, let's say it is again in polar form I'm writing r not e the power iota theta not suppose this is equal to this. So this implies just putting the value over here, I get limit z1 tends to z0 w1 minus w0 over z1 minus z0 is equal to r0 e the power iota theta0. Right? So it follows here from that the limit z1 tends to z0. Yes. Difference between w1 and w0, I have written this to be as I have considered rho 1 e the power iota phi 1. So this is rho 1 e the power iota phi 1. And the difference between z1 and z0 is taken to be as r e the power iota theta 1. So this is r e the power iota theta 1. So this is equal to r naught e the power iota theta naught. From here I can say that this implies the limit z1 tends to z naught. This is rho 1 over r e the power iota theta 1, sorry, phi 1 minus theta 1 is equal to r naught e the power iota theta naught. Now, as z1 tends to z0, which means there is no distance r, that means the angle uh, theta1 will be approaching to alpha1. Yes? Yes. So, if I take the limit on this angles, as z1 tends to z0, if I take the limit for the angles, I can write this as phi 1 minus theta 1 is equal to, this is theta naught, just uh, equating the powers of this e and taking the limits. So this implies this is equal to limit z1 approaching z naught phi 1 minus, if I take the limit on theta 1, I get this as alpha 1 is equal to theta naught, which means this implies limit phi 1 is equal to alpha 1 plus theta naught when z1 is approaching z naught. Hence, the curve tau 1 making angle which alpha 1 plus theta naught with the real axis. This phi 1 is for the this for the w plane this phi 1 is equal to alpha 1 plus theta naught right so it is making angle alpha 1 plus theta naught with the real axis and if i take the other angle if similarly if z2 is approaching z naught if i take the limits on this then my angle will be now for the curve tau 2 this tau 2 curve will make an angle this is alpha 2 plus theta naught with the real axis. If I take the difference of the angles between tau 1 and tau 2, what I get? So I get this as alpha 2 plus theta naught minus alpha 1 plus theta naught. That is equal to, if you solve this, this theta naught will cancel out with this and I get alpha 2 minus alpha 1 which is the same as the angle between the tangents to C1 and C2 at Z0. If you notice again, see, the difference of the angles between these two curves is alpha 2 minus alpha 1, right? And I'm also getting the difference of the angles between these two curves, tau 1 and tau 2, is again as alpha, alpha 2 minus alpha 1, right? So the angle is same between the curves, right? So in other words, and also the sense is also the same and on the same directions. So in other words, 
the mapping W equal to FZ is conformal for this. The angles between the curves has the same sense. The two things we have got that they are having the same angle, the magnitude and also the sense is also the same. Hence, the mapping is conformal. Thank you.